Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Let's get into Fighter, the ultimate feats master. I rank this class a C only because there's an archetype that's clearly better. The first archetype is Aldori Sword Lord. You lose three bonus combat feats, which does hurt, but at the same time you get so many that I wouldn't call it a death kneel for the class. You also lose all rankings of armor training. The dexterity bonus loss is made up by another ability you gain, but losing the armor check penalty reduction definitely hurts. You might consider foregoing heavy armor in favor of lighter armor to maintain your speed. In exchange for all of this, you gain dueling sword proficiency right at level 1. Starting at level 3, you'll gain defensive parry, which increases your AC up to plus 5 when making a full attack with a dueling sword until the end of your next turn. Full attacks are something you should be doing all the time with this class, so this ability is great and also makes up for the dexterity bonus you lost from armor training. At 6th level, you gain the ability every time you disarm an opponent to deal normal damage as well, except it won't include your strength bonus. To me, this ability is irrelevant because it's never worth my time to disarm opponents. Keep in mind that many enemies that have weapons do not have the improved unarmed strike feat. Therefore, if you disarm them, their unarmed attacks will provoke attacks of opportunity. So I'm not saying it's useless. I am saying it's more time efficient to just hit the enemy a couple of more times to take them out and move on with your day. Starting at level 8, when you fight defensively while using a dueling sword, you gain a plus 2 dodge bonus to AC and all your attack penalties are reduced by 2. A very nice easy to trigger boost. Finally, at level 10, you can make an attack of opportunity against any enemy that successfully hits you with a melee attack as long as they are in your range. I give this class a B. It doesn't make the game easier, but it gives you a different style of play, using a weapon you probably haven't experienced before. There are a couple of prestige classes that make this interesting as well, which I showcased in my Legend Blade build that many of you enjoyed. I'll leave a link for it down below. Next up is Armager. You lose two bonus combat feats and even more importantly, one of them is your very first feat which is definitely a huge loss. Those first few levels are the hardest and having an extra feat there really helps. You also lose all ranks of bravery but it's replaced by something I would argue is better. In exchange for all of this you get to choose a Hell Knight order. For those who are not aware, Armagers are individuals who are training to become Hell Knights but haven't actually achieved that rank yet. Each order provides specific bonuses or buffs. You also get Studious Squire, which provides an additional skill rank each level and makes Knowledge World a class skill. The tooltip specifically mentions this is supposed to be the trade-off for the two feats you lose, and I think that's absolutely awful. You don't pick up Fighter for skills, and losing feats in exchange for them is weak. You also gain Ardent, which gives you a bonus of up to plus 5 on saving throws against charm and compulsion effects. It also allows you to re-roll a failed check against those effects once per day. In my opinion, charm and compulsion are much more difficult to deal with long term than fear, especially if you have Sela, so I think this ability is an upgrade over bravery. I rank this class a B+. It's nice having a lore accurate path into Hell Knight and Arden is a nice upgrade. While losing the feat at level 1 hurts, overall losing 2 feats isn't a big deal so this is a legit option. Next on the list is Dragonair Scion. You lose 3 feats and one of them is at level 1 so this is a massive sacrifice. You also lose all ranks of bravery but there are a lot of ways to deal with fear so I don't think this is a huge loss. You also lose all ranks of armor training along with armor mastery which is another huge hit on this class that makes you less tanky. Finally the cherry on top is the loss of weapon mastery which takes away a huge boon of this class. In exchange for all of this you gain a draconic bloodline. Each bloodline corresponds to a different element, but outside of that what you get is always the same. At level 3, Draconic Defenses will provide a bonus of up to plus 3 to your AC and up to 20 to your resistance against whatever element was selected. The energy resistance is irrelevant, but more AC is always nice. At level 4, when attacking with Arcane Strike, you will do an additional 1d4 damage with your chosen element. At level 15, you will get Wings, which are visually represented in the game and provide a plus 3 dodge bonus to your AC. Remember, dodge bonuses stack, so this definitely helps you. 
Finally, at level 20, you gain immunity to sleep, paralysis, and damage from your chosen energy type. It also gives you blind sense, which I have mentioned before is useless, but the immunities are definitely helpful. In addition to all of this, you automatically get Arcane Strike, which allows you, as a swift action, to add a bonus of up to plus 5 on your damage rolls. Extra damage always helps, so this is a nice pickup. You also gain Fearful Might, which provides a bonus on your Intimidation skill checks. This bonus is not large enough for you to reasonably consider not taking Intimidating Prowess, so I don't see it as very helpful. Finally, you get Draconic Presence, which automatically adds Dazzling Display as a feat. This is a must for any frontline fighter, so you can eventually pick up Shattered Defenses. Therefore, I would say this class loses two bonus combat feats instead of one, since you almost certainly would have devoted one of them to Dazzling Display. Overall, I give this class a D, because I think you lose way too much for a bloodline. Bravery, armor training, armor mastery, weapon mastery, and two feats? In exchange for a little bit of AC and some elemental damage? Stop it. Next is Mutation Warrior. You completely lose access to armor training and armor mastery, which is once again a big deal that makes you less tanky. In exchange, you get Mutagen, which provides an alchemical bonus to a physical attribute. Alchemical bonuses are rare, so this will almost certainly stack with everything else that you have. This is a big deal because you also get four ranks of Mutagen Discovery, which is a condensed list of alchemical discoveries from alchemists. This lets you pick up Greater and Grand Mutagen, which will provide a plus A bonus to Strength, plus 6 bonus to Dexterity, plus 4 bonus to Constitution, and a plus 6 bonus to AC. Bananas! I rank this class an S. It's fantastic as a 3 level dip to pick up 3 feats, 1 rank of Bravery and Mutagen. It's fantastic as a 5 level dip to also pick up Weapon Specialization, Weapon Training, and 2 more feats. It's fantastic to take all the way to level 20 for the bonuses I have already talked about, not to mention adding the Feral Discoveries for more AC and attacks. Just all the way around, this is an incredible class that can make your party better. Next on the list is Tower Shield Specialist. You lose all ranks of bravery, but you get an alternative option that I believe is better. You also lose all weapon training ranks and weapon mastery. Again, this is a major blow to the class. In exchange, you get Burst Barrier, which provides a reflex saving throw bonus up to plus 5 against burst spells and effects when you are using a Tower Shield. This is really nice because at level 16 and 20, you get evasion and improved evasion as long as you are using a Tower Shield. Altogether, this makes you very strong against burst spells that can be absolutely devastating. You also get Tower Shield Training, which stacks on top of Armor Training to significantly increase your Dexterity Bonus from Armor, while also significantly lowering your Armor Check penalties as long as you are using a Tower Shield. This is actually a really nice ability that helps to make Heavy Armor even more useful to you. At level 5, using a Tower Shield does not incur the usual negative 2 attack penalty. Obviously, higher attack rolls are always helpful. At level 9, your Tower Shield bonus is applied to AC against touch attacks. Tower Shields are the largest and heaviest shields, so they get higher bonuses, and this will definitely make you more tanky. Remember that touch AC is the lowest type of AC you have. At level 13, when using a Tower Shield, you cannot be flanked, which is a fantastic feature for a tank. I rank this class a B+. It doesn't make the game easier, but it does allow you to use a playstyle that usually you wouldn't even consider. For other classes, tower shields significantly impact your damage output if you are even able to use them. Beyond the mechanics, tower shields are huge in this game, and some of them have really nice designs. You will look more like an unstoppable tank playing this class than any of the others, in my opinion. Quick note before we review Two-Handed Fighter, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you subscribing and hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my videos spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. Alright, last on the list is Two-Handed Fighter. You lose access to all ranks of Bravery, Armor Training, Armor Mastery, and Weapon Training. Again, this is a major blow to the class. In exchange, you get Strong Grip, which provides a plus one CMB and CMD bonus on Sunder and Disarm attempts. Completely irrelevant. Enemies never attempt these and you shouldn't be either. At level three, you can add double your strength bonus to damage from a single two-handed weapon attack. 
For a class like this, your strength bonus should be astronomical, so this definitely helps you. At level 7, the same bonus applies to full attacks as well, except the damage only applies to attacks after the first one. At level 11, you get an attack option that doubles as a trip or bull rush attempt. It's super weird that the class gives you this option, and yet strong grip only applies to sunder and disarm attempts. Anyway, your CMB for trip is probably trash, so more than likely you'll never use this. At level 15, your damage from power attack is increased by 100% instead of 50%. This is fantastic, and of course it gets even better with the mythic version of power attack. At level 19, you get devastating blow, which allows you to make a single attack with a negative 5 attack penalty. If you succeed, the attack is treated as a critical threat. Keep in mind at level 20, all critical threats are automatically confirmed due to weapon mastery. Sometimes full attacks are unavailable and in those situations, this ability will definitely be useful. Finally, you get two-handed weapon training, which will increase the attack and damage of your two-handed weapons by up to plus four. Overall, I rank this class a B. Fighting with two-handed weapons is awesome and this class doesn't sacrifice too much to make that playstyle even more viable. Nothing earth shattering, but it definitely gets the job done. That wraps up my rankings for fighter and all of its archetypes. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.